what is more required for our exam standpoint. Now, first thing that we need to understand is what is a matrix? Any array of numbers, for example, probably typically people represent matrix like this. One, two, some numbers. Any array of numbers represented in the form of rows and columns is what is called as a matrix. And uh, typically uh, these are called the rows. So in this matrix we have three rows and the vertical ones are called the columns. So we have two columns in this example. So the matrix is typically represented as number of rows into number of columns. And uh, it is pronounced as 3 by 2 matrix. Though we write it as multiplication, the reading is generally done as a 3 by 2 matrix. So, number of rows by number of columns. And if we try to link the vectors, the chapter of vectors which we have done uh, earlier, Vector which is uh, an IJK notation or a simple matrix notation we said we will write a vector more like this Which is nothing but this is also a matrix But the only thing is this vector for a vector the number of columns is always equal to 1 So it's a special case of a matrix where the number of columns is on is always 1 that is what we call as a vector. So, vectors are special cases of matrices. And one few more things we need to be comfortable as far as this exam is concerned is the different types of matrices. We call something as a square matrix when the number of rows is same as the number of columns. So, probably a 2 by 2 matrix. Number of rows is 2. Number of columns is 2. Some A, B, C, D. This is a square matrix. Where number of columns is same as the number of rows. 2 by 2 matrix, 3 by 3 matrix. They all get classified as square matrices. Another important classification of the matrix is a zero matrix. All the elements inside that matrix should be zeros itself. Those kind of matrices are called as zero matrices. It could be of the size 1 by 1, 2 by 2, 2 by 3, whatever may be the size of it. It need not be a square matrix. When all the elements of that matrix are zero, then we call it as a square uh, zero matrix. Then, we also have another, another uh, type of special type of matrix called diagonal matrix. What is this diagonal matrix? In a matrix, let's say I am trying to put a matrix of this form. A matrix of this form. This, from the top left corner to the bottom right corner, we call that as the main diagonal or the principal diagonal of the matrix. So, when all the elements of the matrix except the ones on the main diagonal are zeros. Which means on the main diagonal they are all non-zeros and rest all are zeros. We call that kind of a matrix as a diagonal matrix. These are some of the terms we need to be comfortable with. All the elements on the principal diagonal of a matrix are non-zeros. Whereas all the other elements which are not on the main diagonal, they are all zeros. These kind of matrices are typically called as diagonal matrices. And what we see is matrices have lots and lots of applications in the world of finance, in portfolio management. They can be used to solve simultaneous equations and also from that standpoint it is very much advised that we understand some of the basic calculations as well as the basic uh, basic uh, aspects and definitions uh, pertaining to the world of matrices. So with that 
let's move further to look at some of the basic calculations the first thing that comes about when we talk about a matrix is the transpose of the matrix what is meant by transpose it's nothing but interchanging the rows and the columns of the matrix now let's say you have a matrix like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 what is the size of this matrix first of all two rows and three columns so the size of the matrix is a 2 by 3 matrix but when you transpose it all you are doing is tilting it so of the first column will become the first row the second column will become the second row the third column will become the third row so what is happening is the rows are becoming columns and columns are becoming rows which means a 2 by 3 matrix is actually becoming a 3 by 2 matrix this is what is called as a, a transpose so any m by n matrix typically gets transformed into n by m matrix when we are doing a, a transposing of a matrix and when I transpose the shape of the matrix is changing the contents are changing everything is changing but even after I transpose, if the content does not change, that is what we call as the symmetric matrix. For example, you just see like this, any matrix like this, you do a transpose of this matrix, interchange the rows into columns and columns into rows, you will find that the new matrix is also exactly same as the old matrix. Not just in the size, but even in the content. Because you see, in the transposer matrix, this will become the first row, which is same as the original matrix. This will be the second row, which is same as the original matrix. So, that kind of matrices are called as symmetric matrix. Then, the next thing we need to be comfortable with is the basic calculations uh, involved with the matrices. So, we can start off with one simple example and do a few calculations on it. So, let me take a 2 by 3 matrix. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is one 2 by 3 matrix. And uh, another 2 by 3 matrix for me becomes, let's say, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let me tell you a few things. If I have to add or subtract two matrices, the rule is both of them should be of the same size. Both of them should be of the type M by N. This cannot be a 3 by 1 matrix and this cannot be a 3 by 2 matrix. Then I cannot add these two matrices. Please be careful about it. The size of both the matrices should be the same. If at all I have to add or subtract two matrices. So once I add, once I want to add the two matrices, the process is very simple. Positional addition. The first element of this, you add with the first element of this. So position wise, you just do a simple addition. 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7. This is what is the summation matrix. Same thing can happen if I want to take a subtraction. Position wise subtraction. 1 minus 6 minus 5. 2 minus 5 minus 3. 3 minus 4 minus 1. 4 minus 3, 1. 5 minus 2, 3. 6 minus 1, 5. This is my subtracted matrix. So, matrix addition and subtraction is very simple exercise. And as I said, it is possible only when both the matrices are of the same size. Then, one more thing we have to be comfortable with is multiplying the matrix by a scalar. So, let's say this is the matrix. I want to multiply it by 3. It is nothing but all the elements of the matrix will get multiplied by 3 directly. 
3, 4 is 12, 3, 5 is 15, 3, 6, 8. This is the same thing we have done even in our vectors. So, because vector is a special case of the matrix, all, all things which we have done in vectors more or less work the same way in our matrices also. Or probably it should be the reverse. All the things that work in our matrices should be applicable directly to vectors. So, the addition, subtraction and the multiplication by scalar, they remain the same whether it is in vectors or in your matrices. So, these are some of the things you have to be comfortable with. Then, the next thing that becomes very important for us is multiplication of the two matrices. When I multiply two matrices, again there is a rule. For addition and subtraction, the rule or the eligibility criteria is both of them should be of the same size. But that is not the case with multiplication of the two matrices. The multiplication of the two matrices is possible.